Hi everybody, this is a new video of a series I'm doing showing how to do Bing modeling with FreeCAD and we are modeling the Barcelona Pavilion by Ms. van der Rohe and in this video we are going to show an other way to make 2D views of our drawing. You remember in last video we used this system here that I'm hiding now uh, which is producing objects directly in the 3D view from our from a section plane. And now we are going to use the TechDraw module. And I will show two ways to use the TechDraw module. The first way is by using, still reusing our same section plane. So I'm switching now to the TechDraw module. We have these two buttons here. One that inserts the default uh, sheet with the default template. Uh, this sheet is editable. You can change the, the, the names there. And it is like the default uh, template that comes with, with uh, TechDraw. But there are many other templates and there are SVG files. You can easily, very easily make your own. So I'm selecting here a blank A2 template. And um, I'm deleting the older one. And I'm now going to place a view of my section. So I'm selecting my section plane and using this button here that simply inserts um, a 2D view of our section. Very similarly to what we did uh, last month with, with the shape 2D view. Uh, instead, it's making its view in a, in a text row play, uh, page instead of the document. Uh, it's a bit big, so we're changing the scale to make it smaller. Uh, in this video here, I didn't edit the calculation times. So you can see for yourself uh, how long it takes to uh, calculate, to recalculate a view. And um, you see that it takes quite a long, long time. This is still a, a problem when using TechDraw. Uh, that's basically why I showed the other method the other time, which is quite faster. And in some cases, um, at the moment, what you want. You see that the, the view is created, but these the TechDraw also has these dimensioning tools, but they are unavailable for this view. This is because this uh, arc section view uh, is not a proper um, TechDraw object and it doesn't support all the, all the TechDraw tools. Uh, so how do we add the dimensions? Um, in this case, basically, we're going to add them in our 3D model. So I'm simply placing dimensions here directly inside my model uh, with the beam tools. I'm going to place two dimensions. text and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger this is just visual for ourselves because in tech draw I can also set the, the text size the way I want. So this is good for now. So what we're going to do now is create a group for all these annotations. And we take our section plane and the section plane doesn't take into consideration every object of the document. So we're adding our group 
to this section plane. So now this section plane is seeing the 3D model and the contents of our group. See that when I pressed OK, it's recalculating the view on the page. So it's freezing a little bit. This time that Tagdo takes to recalculate um, is really what's uh, the biggest problem with using it for. And you see that it is there. Uh, and so you can just simply add new stuff uh, now inside that group. It will be automatically added to, to the view. So this is quite a very convenient way to work um, with this. Uh, I'm now going to this this button as an SVG file. And then I'm opening this exported SVG file with Inkscape, which is an other open source uh, SVG editing application. It's a little bit like like uh, Illustrator or that kind of applications. And uh, Inkscape is also multi-platform, and it's really, really a, a very nice tool. And you see that this is coming in perfectly. So uh, we're going to export this as a PDF because um, this is a, a nice step to do because as uh, Inkscape has a really, really good SVG rendering um, engine and um, it's usually able to export a very, very um, faithful PDF. So this is an intermediary step that is very convenient to, to make sure that what you're exporting is really what you want. And checking your SVG file in Inkscape uh, is for me a very good step to, to make sure uh, everything is there and everything looks the way, the way I want. Uh, so, so this is uh, one way to do and I'm now going to show another way uh, which is not using our section plane and having Tegdo do it all by itself which will allow, allow us to use the native uh, Tegdo tools like the dimensioning tools so I'm making a new sheet. This time uh, I used um, the default one. And I selected my pavilion object. And I pressed the view, the tag draw view button, uh, which is different than the one I used earlier. And it has created a view. And you see it's quite large again, because it comes at one to one scale. So we're going to change the scale. And this takes a little bit. Um, the native tech draw tool is a bit slower than the arc section plane view that we just used uh, in previous step. you see once again I didn't edit this time so this is the real time it takes uh, here in my machine um, so th this is so you can just compare the options uh, some give you a, a like a pretty much uh, final and ready result this is at the right size now while others uh, are faster but they um, 
they require a little bit of extra work, like for example, exporting to another application or things like that. Um, that's where we stand at at this point, and um, it doesn't prevent you to work. It just like you have several options, and um, you need to choose which one is more more appropriate for your particular case. Uh, for smaller tech draw is just working magnificently already, and uh, what we need basically is a bit of optimization to make it work with uh, bigger models. So this works quite easily. Uh, you pick two two points uh, with control um, pressed. You see that inside these tech draw generated views, these gray points are where you can click to place dimensions. And um, there it is. And uh, the cool thing is that um, it knows a tech draw already knows it's uh, that it's scaled, and uh, it's managed all the dimensions appropriately. Like even if the view is scaled on your page, the dimension is a real world dimension. This is. Uh, 940 centimeters, which is the real size of this object uh, in, in my 3D model. So all the scaling is uh, handled for you there. Uh, there is control over, uh, as you saw, I just uh, changed the text size. There are also control over how your, your text appears, uh, if you want the, uh, the unit uh, suffix, etc. So I'm making another export here. And there are other uh, further uh, useful tools with these tech draw views that I'm not going to show here to not make this video very long. Uh, but like uh, you can hatch, uh, p place hatches in, in surfaces uh, and things like that. Um, so there are really quite a lot of tools in the TechDraw workbench that are interesting to, to, to play with. Um, so I'm export, I've exported this sheet as well and I'm now opening it in Xcape just to make sure everything is correct. And here it is. I can, of course, uh, change the line width. You see that if I hover the mouse over a uh, face, I can select faces inside this view. And you can color them or put hatching in them. I'm now changing the line width. So this is really the uh, of all the three options that I showed to to export 2D views of your model. This one is really the most powerful, but at the moment it's also still the slowest one. So this is really a matter of assessing what's what's most convenient for you in in a specific case, and um, it won't stay slow forever. Of course, uh, this is an area that where there is a lot of optimization to be done. And I guess that's it for this one. I hope you like. See you in the next one.